Firstly, I'd just like to thank everybody for joining this morning. Um, really pleased that you're, you're taking the time to join one of uh, the next in our series of our BDO um, tax technology sessions today. The topic of today's event is uh, basically how was your year end? So a little bit of a canter through some of those. So if I can just have the next slide, please, Reese. So for those that uh, haven't met me, my name is Ian Borden. I'm a tax technology partner and I lead uh, BDO's tax performance engineering group. Um, to try and make this a little bit different and a little bit more interesting today, uh, we've got a couple of people from the BDO team in the UK who are gonna be uh, talking through their experiences, uh, their views and uh, their insights to the market. I'm also delighted to be joined by Thomson Reuters for this event today. So I have Josh Allen from the Thomson Reuters team who will be taking us through how Thomson Reuters see uh, this market, some of their vision as well. Uh, so on the BDO side, I've got Ian Bacon, who's our head of delivery, who will be taking us through um, some of his experience from when he was in-house, but also some of the work he does at BDO at the moment in terms of implementations. And I've got Scott and Asan. Scott recently back from secondment at a client where he's been helping them with year end and Asan, who's run a significant number of tax year end projects, both hopefully sharing their experiences in terms of what they're seeing and what they're doing. So if we quickly just look at the agenda and hopefully you won't hear too much from me today. Our plan was to have a little bit of a look through and talk about the common issues that we've seen from organizations who've recently been in year end situations and things that we've learned. We're gonna have a very quick look at um, what clients are doing at the moment and some of the thought process that it's going through in response to um, the year end challenges, some of the other factors that are having an impact on us at the moment. Obviously, a number of you will be aware of the uh, making tax digital for corporate taxes and what that could potentially mean. So we'll touch very briefly on that. We wanted to make the session quite practical and quite useful. So we'll then pick up a couple of case studies with the SAN in terms of what certain groups are doing and how they are uh, approaching it uh, in some practical detail. And then we're gonna have half an hour at the end where um, Josh is gonna take us through the Thomson Reuters vision for their technology platform, what we're seeing, uh, as they, how are they interpreting the market and what they're putting in place, but also a little bit of a look through one source tax provision, which is one of the uh, leading tax uh, provision tools that are out there. So you can see what that can do. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Scott, uh, who's gonna give us a bit of insight into how was his year end this year? Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for joining. Um, before I start, I'm just gonna ask you just to uh, go find your little happy place because uh, in a minute, I'm just gonna ask you just to cast your mind back to your last year end um, and just see if anything I'm saying kind of resonates with, uh, with anything that you went through. Um, so just to give you a little introduction to myself, before I started off my career in tax and later tax technology, um, I worked at a smaller um, firm in their accounts team, so I went through a year end there, that was purely a very rudimentary Excel based exercise, and more recently as Ian said, um, I went on secondment um, to a, a large multinational and that was slightly more sophisticated in terms of their processes, but we still had a lot of Excel based um, processes there. So I've seen kind of both ends of the spectrum there. So um, one of the key things, uh, or obviously the key thing that we all face at year end uh, is time pressure. Um, there's so much to do in so little time um, and it has an impact across absolutely everything that we do and all the challenges that we face. That was my number one enemy <laughs> in terms of year end processes. Um, so if I look down, kind of look back at, at some of the more specific things that I really found challenging um, within the kind of squeeze time scale. So the readiness for current year. So um, when we started the year end process, um, was there anything that we could have done? that actually would have got us to a better position, ready to kind of kick on with actually the current year stuff. So looking back at prior adjustments, you know, your period 13 adjustments, could, could we have got those things in place quicker? Probably, yes, um, is the answer. There was there were certainly some things that we have the information there ready to do. Um, and going forward, actually, if you could kind of start that process ready so that when, when tax is ready to come in and do things, hey, you know, we can kick on with the current year. 
insufficient and inconsistent information. So what I mean by this, insufficient, sometimes, you know, we've been missing information. So there might be things that come later on, pension information, share schemes, valuations of properties, things like that. All things that have an impact on actually what we need to deliver. Um, is there anything we can do to kind of forecast based on prior years or prior quarters where we've done information? Is there anything we could leverage there to get us to a to a reasonable position without there just being a gap in our data? And also inconsistent information. So um, with the multinational that I work for, there were global teams um, feeding in, in information and they're coming in, in very different formats. Now, was there anything we could have done where we could have done some basic validation checks on, you know, some basic information like profit before tax, and um, just to make sure that, you know, high level, we're, we're working from the same information and the numbers are gonna work and we're not getting any material differences. Um, is there anything we can do to kind of standardize a process um, across the different regions so that actually when we're receiving the information, it's a lot easier to review and I'm not having to rebucket information. Changing information. So uh, unfortunately, the uh, the nature of the beast in terms of year end. So we receive information, auditors change things, or you know, there's further information that comes to light and that has to be recharged, put through. Trying to check that everything's updated there. You know, are all the links working? Um, has everything updated in the places it, it, it needed to? going forward, you know, is there anything we can do to kind of create an audit trail of, of where this information comes from and where it's being pushed to? Is there anything we can do to kind of automate that? Um, certainly next time round, we, we can start building that in. Risk management. So this kind of feeds off of absolutely everything. So the change in information, all the inconsistent information, are we making sure that we're meeting what we need to for risk? So again, we're on, on the multinational that I recently was seconded to, and they have large US operations, so they're within the SOX legislation. So they need documentation to show actually, to, to prove that they're on top of that, managing that risk. Um, you know, year end is very time pressured. You, you're working late nights, you're under a lot of pressure. How can I make sure that I'm meeting all, all of the risk management things that I need to do? Are there any processes in place, any automation we can do to make sure that actually those are being captured at the point they need to? And probably my biggest bugbear, uh, battle with software. And uh, let me just show you what I mean by that. These error messages, I'm opening Excel spreadsheets, the you know, broken links, links through that when you click to update, it takes five minutes to update. Yeah, you know, I forgot to say spreadsheet once. I worked off of the, an old spreadsheet. All these things that really, because of the time pressure, that they're, they're silly little things, but they really cost you time. And, and in one case, you know, it took me three hours to redo a spreadsheet just because I closed it without saving it by accident. Is there any process that we could put in place that actually would be more efficient and would be kind of live saving that information? And I've just put a couple more examples on the screen there. So once you're actually in the spreadsheet, you know, errors all across, having to spend time working back through, trying to clear these errors, working through where actually those, those originate from and making sure that the Excel spreadsheet is clear of that. And the th second thing there, um, this is something I was guilty of in my first job. Um, I created a nice long uh, formula with an Excel. And when I came to look at it again at year end, I forgot actually what it meant and I had to rework back through it or um, make sure that it was actually doing what I needed to at year end. So there's all these things which really are costing time. And is there any way that you know we could we could make this better? So it's kind of in summary, you know, I'm I, I've been there, I've I've really been in your your shoes and you know, I really respect and you know sympathize with all of you who go through year end. Um, it's certainly not an easy or stress-free process. Um, you know, it was challenging. I did find it challenging and, and stressful at times, but yeah, I enjoyed it. And certainly those kind of processes and controls, they were my savior in this. This is the thing that actually got me through all of this. Um, so thank you for listening. Um, I'll let you go back to your happy place now and I will hand back over to Ian, who's gonna talk through what's going on in the market. Thank you. 
think I'm a little bit worried about what your happy place is to be fair, Scott, if it's uh, if it's writing these Excel spreadsheets. Um, I said I wouldn't talk too much. I do have one quick slide I just wanted to touch on in terms of what's going on. Uh, just as a quick reminder, there is in Zoom a, a Q&A option in the bottom. If people do have questions, we have a lot of time at the end. If you want to push any questions into the Q&A as we go through anything that's relevant to you, we will look to answer them as we as we kind of go through and kind of publish those. So please do uh, engage in the Q&A section. Um, OK, just to give some clarity, if I go on to my next slide, um, a number of you will be aware that uh, HMRC has published their digital strategy, their digital journey in July last year. Um, we've all been on that journey for a little while. We've seen the indirect tax side of things come through in terms of MTD. Now that the soft landing for the digital links has, uh, that period has come to an end, HMRC now considers um, business as usual for the VAT side of things from, um, from April this year. The next big thing, there is some income tax work that's coming through in terms of the timings for that, but I'm, I presume a lot of people on this call are, are starting to think about what it means in terms of the corporate tax consultation that came out. Um, I don't think there was a huge amount in terms of surprises, in terms of what the document suggested. We are still early stages. That is now still subject to change and people will be uh, providing their comments and have provided their comments on that. I think for me, there was a couple of highlights that are just worth teasing out. I think when we said there was no ex, there was no real surprises, I think what that means is they've taken a lot of the key learnings from the indirect tax side of things. So digital links, digital journey, digital records and compatible software are all the buzzwords that are coming through on the corporate tax consultation again. So, you know, if you thought that we were going to get away with not having um, automation and links between uh, source data and our calculators. And unfortunately that is going to be part and parcel of it. And, and I think it's it's going to be the way of the world. And I think we need to accept that manually copying and pasting uh, into spreadsheets is going to become challenged and more challenging by HMRC and therefore our auditors as we go through. The, the two highlights or the two key um, points that are worth teasing out in terms of the consultation was the recommendation that corporate tax returns um, were due to be filed at the same time as you're filing your financial statements. Now, I appreciate a number of you have done that this year anyway, as a result of COVID and as a result of the deferrals and the move back of the statutory financial statements. But I think that is going to be a change for a lot of groups as that becomes a more of a permanent thing. And we'll, we'll touch on what the implications for that are and what groups are doing in a moment. Uh, the final thing is, this has been um, talked about for quite a while and I've been on the journey with HMRC for about the last five and a half, six years. Uh, they talk about real-time reporting and in corporate tax purposes, that interim reporting is what they consider real-time. Uh, it was intended to be, or it was initially conceived that it was going to be quite a... Um, quite a detailed quarterly report that was being produced, almost like a deferred tax calc on a quarterly basis. But the changes then the wording that we saw in the consultation document was more around the fact that it's not a submission, it's an interim report. For those that are in quips or super quips, you may be able to get away with the current process that you're doing as long as you can demonstrate that you are doing some types of calculation or some forms of assessment at that stage. So we'll wait to see what the final wording of that comes out. But I think the direction is clear. It's digital records. It's digitally linked. It's closer alignment between financial statements, corporate tax returns, provisions, and possibly additional data submissions to the revenue is where we're going to go. So what are groups doing? Given that this is not going live until 2024 and pilot 2026 in go live, if we look at our next slide, what we're talking about here is for a lot of groups, there's no need to panic at the moment. There's an opportunity to think about if you are changing core accounting systems, if you're looking at shared service centers, you're looking at your operating models, uh, then it's worthwhile raising it with the broader teams that this is what you're going to have to live with and this is what you're going to have to do. But for most of us, as we're going through this process, as we've heard from Scott in terms of what he experienced when he was in-house, um, the work done on the provisions and the work done on for the returns and the work done for the financial statements is probably done independently. There's probably lots of hours spent reworking and redoing things where you've done to an extent and to a level. Now that's what we see at the moment. 
what are the good groups going doing at the moment? No real surprises here. If we look at the next slide, it's how do we align the provision process? How do we align the corporate tax process? How do we align the statutory financial statements process? How can we reuse some of that information? And we're going to hear from Thomson Reuters later in terms of how they're fitting into this journey and their various products can, can form part of it. But a number of you will still be using Excel and, and there's some op other options out there as well to help in terms of being able to integrate that provision and that compliance process. And I think when I look at the, the forward thinking groups and the groups that are starting to respond to this now, it's they're talking about the alignment of these processes. They're talking about how they can make it work effectively and not having to rework to save time. So doing interim reports to a level that can be reused so that year end isn't a throwaway and start again. And for a lot of us, that's meant for years. It's just been interims being a PBT times rate calculation and a bit of a finger in the air. If we did a little bit more in a more smoother automatic way, could your end be easier? If I don't have time for corporate tax returns to be prepared in the same way after the financial statements are ready, I'm going to have to preload some of that work. So just food for thought in terms of what the, these types of groups uh, are doing. Uh, and Ian, it's, it's probably worth hearing from you a little bit in terms of what, what you're seeing in this space as well in terms of data and and that process alignment. Yeah, no, thanks, Ian. So what we generally see is we see uh, a large uh, attention to moving processes together, as Ian said. You're looking at processes from budgeting through to interim, through to your year end, your stats, and then your return, uh, all aligning sharing data. You're touching data once. Um, we've often seen and, and continue to see these processes split. Um, but that integration is going to be almost a necessary evil going forward. If we move to the next slide, please. But what does this really mean? It means that we're going to have to have a really hard focus on data. Is our data at source as clean and appropriate for our use in both in multiple processes going forward? How do we do that? We essentially need to partner with our finance teams much closer much more interrogation of the ledgers, perhaps even changing and helping finance change those finance processes to get transactions booked correctly at source. Can we integrate with the um, purchase ordering process or even into integrating with the invoicing process in much the same way as VAT has already done? Corporate tax is probably going to have to shift to exactly the same type of processing. Now, if we move into um, no, any finance changes, so finance transformation programs, they give a great opportunity for, for tax, corporate tax in particular, to take a greater interest in how those processes are going to be implemented and getting part of that budget to make sure that their needs are met on a go forward basis. Often those processes have been purely VAT driven. Now corporate tax is going to have to come to the table and be very clear about what they, data they need in order to, to perform it. If we can't do that, there isn't a large finance change process, then there's always the ability uh, to put on uh, large, small scale uh, processes where we can analyze data on a more real time basis and feed that back, pre-processing that data uh, as, as defined here. Uh, we can help finance clean up over time and get into the mindset of continuous improvement. Continuous improvement of data means we get continuous improvement of process and process outputs. Um, next slide. So really what we're looking at is process, data, technology, and if we can use those small automations to move that data through tools or within the tools themselves, uh, we will get ultimate results. By bringing it all together, we can really start to get better information and that better information can be fed ultimately into better analytics where decisions can be made, uh, better decisions, tax becomes a business partner, helping the business to see what the ultimate effect of, of tax is in, in, across the, the overall process. i hand back to Ian just to finish off. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Uh, and, and I think I think that's the important point. You know, everyone's going to have their own plan, their own strategy, their own vision for doing this. More and more organisations now are putting together the their tax technology strategy or their tax technology vision to enable them to 
reuse elements of bits of technology that aren't necessarily perfect tax technology solutions. Most tax functions have relied on Excel heavily for a number of years, but there's some great options and some great alternatives out there. It doesn't have to be hugely cost of costly to do these things, but there are some great vendors that are producing some solutions that can really fit in. But having that vision and how this should fit together and making it work for you is what we're seeing the, uh, the best groups doing at the moment to try and reduce cost and, and work from that perspective. And I think we want to kind of jump into a couple of case studies now just to kind of try and bring that to life a little bit more. Um, Asan, you worked on one recently. Can I um, pass over to you to give us a bit of an insight into what you learned and, and how that worked for you? Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Ian. Thank you, everyone, uh, for taking part in our session today. So Ian Bacon and I uh, would like to take you through a couple of case studies today. Um, the first one involving a multinational publicly traded enterprise based in the UK who had in place an Excel-based historical process for the year-end tax reporting. Uh, they've also brought in a new tax manager. They've also had a change of auditor. Um, and the group tax as a whole was being challenged uh, on several issues by their auditor. Um, whilst the strategically the consensus was to move uh, to a third party solution such as OTP, however, the time restraint and the impending deadline in mind meant that uh, we had to come up with a, a, an interim solution, a short term tactical solution. And it often is the case that client cannot go to a more strategic solution in one go. You, you sometimes have to stagger your approach and go through the, the steps involved in the middle. So that's exactly what we did with this client. We came up with uh, what I would refer as like a roadmap style journey with them. Um, so in sort of phase one of this roadmap, uh, what we put in place is a best practice template as an interim solution. Uh, and uh, which got us through the year end. Uh, and it also meant uh, there were some, some benefits. Thank you, sorry, I forgot to move to the, the next slide. So that's the slide on the screen now. Um, so having in, in implemented that interim solution, it meant a number of things. So for example, it meant that uh, uh, the local teams were more uh, doing the sort of the heavy lifting of the process. Uh, they were more uh, susceptible to the change management side of things as well. And it also meant that we are able to automate a number of things that wasn't possible with the difficult Excel based approach previously. So we could, for example, automate the FX adjustments. We could automate the, the tax rate adjustments that was necessary for the calculation. Um, so that's kind of like the phase one. So having gone through it, um, gone through the year end, we now had a little bit more time to think about what we want to do next. And in phase two, what we've done is we implemented OTP as the, as the enterprise grade solution for this client. Uh, and it's not unheard of that you move from, let's say, from a, this difficult Excel heavy process uh, to OTP directly. Uh, but it was quite interesting that we took that staggered journey to get to the OTP from the Excel. So the interim solution being our best practice template. Um, so what happened post implementation of OTP? Um, it, it, we, we saw a lot more questions from the auditors. It, the question didn't stop just because we implemented a, a solution. Uh, but this time, uh, we were much more equipped to do, deal with those questions because the, the, we had more granular level data. Uh, we were uh, able to uh, sort of drill down more into the numbers when the auditors had questions. Auditors had a lot more comfort in the process uh, overall as a result of that staggered approach as well. But the other interesting thing kind of resonated with me and why I kind of like this approach is that we could uh, sort of utilize the, the, the learning we, we learned during phase one, which is the interim solution, and adapt our approach where necessary for phase two. Um, and uh, that I think, in, in my opinion, that quite, uh, quite worked well. Um, and the other interesting point I'd like to make is um, a lot of people would often prefer 
this sort of time pressured, let's go from our Excel based all the way to the OTB approach, which works well in some cases. Um, and some people may think that having gone through this staggered approach, it might incur additional costs, et cetera. But it wasn't the case. Uh, we made sure that uh, we weren't just losing all the effort that we're putting in. We are uh, learning and adapting in phase, uh, what we learn in, in phase one, we were uh, uh, sort of putting in place uh, and adapting in phase two. Um, so that was quite interesting. And, and it wasn't any more expensive than it would have been if the client decided to go straight from the Excel to, to the OTB. Um, what else we kind of saw, um, there were definitely a, a, a considerable improvement uh, in the process. The, it was more, a lot more efficient. Uh, as a result, we saw a reduced cycle time. It also meant that the, with the benefit of, of like sort of OTP and the enterprise create solutions like OTP, the process was scalable. So they moved from their annual one-off year-end process to a quarterly process. Uh, it also meant it's scalable. So if they've gone through a reorganization, which this client did do towards the end, we are able to onboard uh, the, the new, new group or new companies uh, onto OTP quite quickly. And it also meant that they could save cost and utilize some of their now freed up time to do more value adding tasks as a result. Um, so with that, um, what I'd like to do now is invite Ian Bacon to take you through the second case study. So Ian, over to you. So we could move to the next slide, please. So what we thought we'd do here is almost give you a, a high level overview of what a before and after view looks like. So this is actually um, a real client. Uh, it's actually where I used to work at. Uh, so I was in-house for 14 years uh, before moving to professional services. And this is my tra transformation. So on the left-hand side is uh, essentially a, a pie chart. And that pie chart essentially is the amount of time allocated by my tax function to reporting. So tax, tax reporting, your, your, your annual provision cycle, your compliance cycle, assurance, which is checking that things are booked right to start with and making sure everything flows correctly. Advisory is where you're advising the business and strategic is where you're making those planning decisions, just to kind of give you an, an idea of what each of those processes are. And in the before world, um, the graph below uh, kind of shows you how my team was utilized over the life of a year. Um, so we were a quarterly reporter, as you can probably see by the peaks and troughs, uh, that took place um, but those that red bar that goes along the goes along that graph is all about how much overtime was being put in on those quarters and it was significant and not only that my reporting cycle was, was taking up so much effort and so much time of my team that i'm actually almost stopping compliance activity and assurance activity in order to meet my reporting process obligations a huge amount of resource when you actually look at the time spent is often deployed to that kind of reporting uh, cycle. Uh, we found this was completely unsustainable. And so we took the opportunity uh, with a finance transformation program going on, uh, which was reducing the, the, the timeline for close uh, to completely revisit and relook on an end-to-end -end basis, how we could do this, this process more effect effectively. Um, and in the end, we ended up going from what was a quarterly cycle to a monthly cycle. Um, but by changing that process and by changing the approach and by partnering with the finance team, we're able to get a much better allocation of resource across tax. So instead of you know, those quarterly peaks, we ended up with a much flatter, much better utilized team overall. Um, we reduced the amount of effort that was spent on reporting by, as you can see in the graph, you know, close, to, close to halving it. In actuality, it was more like reducing it by almost 70 percent in total and that allowed us to focus time onto our compliance and assurance pieces and the compliance and assurance pieces in particular was focused on reducing those back years so focusing time on closing down historic tax risk um, closing audits or inquiries um, by focusing reallocating the time saved to more value-added you know, tax becomes not a cash hog of the business, but a cash releaser of the business. And then finally, on the insurance point, by upping that insurance level, we're much more able to be more compliant, 
uh, remove risk, remove tax risk in, in totality, and engaging with uh, you know, the likes of HMRC and other tax authorities much more effectively on, a, on an ongoing basis. Uh, so that's just the story, um, a real before and after picture, just to give you an idea of the timescales for this. Um, the first before is year one, the after is year four. This is not a one hit wonder, it's a journey that we go on uh, when we do this kind of uh, process transformation. And so it's not going to be, oh, I've got a system now, it'll just work. It's a journey, a continuous improvement cycle. And that continuous improvement continues today because this picture was you know, six, seven years ago. And they're, they're always improving. And so that's a case study number two. Thank with you. that, I'll pass back to Mr. Bowden. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Uh, look, appreciate people taking us through the, their experiences of kind of putting these things. Uh, just like change attack now, over to Josh and the Thomson Reuters team. Uh, we thought these sessions become useful when we kind of start talking through what some of the software vendors and, and their, their slightly different visions and their approaches to how, how they're going uh, about this and, and delivering on this. So really excited that Josh from Thomson Reuters has joined us today to give us their view and to give us a little bit of a demo of one of their products, the one source tax provision product, which in uh, San's case was the solution that he implemented when uh, for his case study example. So Josh, over to you. Excellent. Cheers. Thank you. Um, and just thank you to everyone at BDO for having me on today and for, for everybody else on the call for joining. Um, I'll probably start by sharing my screen would be a, a good point, wouldn't it? So let me just do that. Uh, I might need you, someone on your side, to stop sharing, apparently. Thank you. Uh, right. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Um, not, not yet, Josh. We haven't got you yet. Oh, well, you haven't got it yet. How about now? No. Nope. Uh, I've got to hit that button. I always miss that on um, Zoom. <laughs> Apologies. There you go. We've got you. We've got your slides. <laughs> okay, excellent. So yeah, it was um, it was good to. It was certainly good to hear uh, Scott. Sort of your, you know, your your, your starting points brought back um, some memories. Definitely um, when you were talking about sort of the, the spreadsheets, trying to follow your logic back through when you built the formulae. I think um, something which can get even more complicated and stressful where you've sort of involved macros in the pro process as well which you know that they can for the person who's designed them that can be easy to follow but if you're not that person and you're coming in at a later stage it's, it could be tricky to kind of follow that logic back through so yeah that was something that I very much um, uh, resonated and I think if I look back at kind of the, the 10 years or so that I've been involved in sort of tax reporting and uh, the, the cycles that I went through I think um you touched on this that the ones that went smoothly um, and would almost almost be a pleasure to be involved in even the the, the the tight deadlines still were where we had the capacity to significantly or sufficiently prepare during the year so the more you can pre-plan the more you know do your roll forwards early true up for the prior year for the final return get things like your payments within the year and so forth the more you can kind of get that done before the kind of crunch time within the year end i tend to find that the easier that that process is now of course having the uh having the capacity to do so uh, all the way throughout the year isn't always isn't always there it could be particularly challenging where you have got you know you're using excel for one process in part of the year um, you know you've got your tax report your, your tax returns stuff taking part in one solution you've got these kind of disparate uh, disparate systems and processes in place so i think i mean really just to echo kind of what you've all been saying that one of the biggest things organizations can do to help create i guess extra capacity so is to align the technologies and the processes that they're taking part in throughout the year um, this is something that within the teams i've worked in i've always strived to do but again often our ability to do so was you know, restricted by the fact that we were doing everything in Excel and so forth. So I think it's fair to say that at Thomson Reuters, we really recognise uh, that this struggle is real. Um, I mean, many here within our development teams, within our professional services, as well, and including myself, have a background in in-house, in tax teams, as well as in the, you know, the, the firms like BDO. I think it'd be fair to say for, for most people that I speak to at Thomson Reuters, we've been drawn to working with Thomson Reuters really because 
Well, one partly because of the breadth of solutions it has, which can help you with your, you know, your various processes throughout kind of the tax cycle throughout the year. Um, but also that those solutions on their own are often, you know, we design them, we, we drive them to be the best in breed. If you take our, our corporate tax compliance solution, for example, it's been around about 20 or 30 years now. And, you know, it's heavily used by, by tax firms for, the, for their own compliance purposes. But when we take those kind of individual solutions, what we're now doing uh, collectively across those is now taking advantage of really modern technology. So we're taking those kind of core solutions and moving those into the cloud. This helps to give you more of a, a centralized platform from which you can then manage your tax processes. So our corporate tax compliance solution, which I just mentioned, that actually moved across into the cloud uh, last year. And what this now means is we can, you know, we can build more connections uh, between the various solutions so you can drive efficiencies across those processes you know leverage master data manage that more centrally and have it sort of flow through into the individual solutions manage your structured and your unstructured data as, as well really integrate the applications to drive a number of efficiencies but also bring a lot of control and eradicate some of the risk you get when you're typically doing these things and try, you know trying to manage 50 different spreadsheets for example in the in the year-end reporting process so this is kind of kind of the, the vision of what we're doing at, with OneSource at the moment. Many of our solutions are already within the cloud platform. Some of them are in the process of, of migrating. Um, but the idea is to give you this, you know, this central place where, yes, we continue to deliver on our core compliance kind of requirements. We're going to continue to, you know, build out the content to ensure that you're able to comply with, you know, local legislation when it comes to filing returns. But if you think about the year end process, provide you with solutions that can easily be configured and adapted to, you know, meeting your, your, your local uh, regulatory disclosure needs, as well as your group uh, disclosure needs. But it is all about that kind of connectivity. So yeah, deliver on that core compliance, but now moving into the cloud, we can really, you know, really start to connect those dots for you and help you work in a much more efficient way. I think the other thing to be kind of aware of is, you know, connectivity, Connectivity has been achievable for a number of years, you know, robotics and things have been around many organizations have put these into place. What we're doing now with our technology and using things called APIs is building out this kind of connectivity in a way that enables you as a tax team or a financial uh, financial team to, you know, to be able to evolve that setup easily as your organization changes. So. I mean, you'll you all be aware group structures change, finance systems change, regulations change. All these kind of things are constantly changing, which the tax team has to battle. So if we're going to roll out technology that enables you to achieve kind of connectivity and efficiency, it makes sense that this is something that is done in a way that's less reliant on IT and empowers you as a tax team to be able to evolve, you know, as your business, uh, as your business grows. So kind of these are kind of the three kind of fundamentals about what one source is now doing with its uh, with its solutions so what you end up with in effect is this kind of uh centralized environment which essentially puts you know brings your data in your source data your master data and stores that centrally within one platform within one database that master data that data your your source data that one then feed off into the various applications that you have. So eliminating a lot of duplication, reducing a lot of risk, and also enables the, you to handle more granular data as well uh, and manage that. So that in turn can then help drive the accuracy through you know, some of the optimization and the tax logic that you have within these solutions. So if we think about sort of the, the direct tax space, for example, we we have a whole breadth of solutions for, for sort of direct tax purposes from, you know, the corporate tax return filing system, our dedicated tax provisioning module, which is, you know, really aimed at, you know, groups with uh, large groups, I'd say minimum sort of 25 entities up into, into the hundreds and groups with sort of uh, maybe some overseas complications and, you know, gap adjustments and things like that. We have dedicated module for that but we also have our you know uncertain tax positions which is now seeing we're now seeing become more and more relevant certainly with the the change the changes uh to um i've forgotten what it is now if rick um <laughs> i want to say 13 but that's not right so um so with the change with, with the changes there 
And with all this, it's all about, okay, how can we, you know, drive efficiency? How can we eliminate that duplication? So to take a common user case that's often used with across the one source suite, you know, if you think about your statutory reports, your statutory sort of filing accounts, the finance team's typically going to take a TB from your ERP system to generate that, those disclosures and reports. Now, obviously, for the corporate tax return, you're going to be using that same data. So it makes sense for us to be able to pull the data from our statutory reporting solution to efficiently populate your corporate tax computation for you. That gives you a, a, lot of, a number of different assurances. One, you know you're using the same data, so you're going to get to the same position. But also, you know, you're having that, dig that digital link between, be between the two processes. And you think back to sort of what Ian was talking about on MTD and the potential need for uh, being able to having to file your corporate tax returns at the same time as you're doing your, your statutory accounts. I think mean, that that connectivity, that ability to, you know, bring that data in at a click of a button is going to be, you know, paramount going forward. But we can also then, you know, leverage that data into the year end process. So I was talking at the beginning about, you know, the importance of being prepared uh, in advance, getting as much of that kind of preparation work done before you get into the crunch of, of the year end. And, you know, where clients are using our one source corporate tax system uh, compliance solution, we can actually pull that data from the return and use that to automate the return to provision adjustments in your year end. And that's stuff which, you know, you could do prior to the year end to get that up and running. Or even if you, you know, your, your returns, you filed them right to the wire, for example, the la last night of uh, December, for example, if you're having to do that in the year to date, uh, in, in your middle of your provisioning process, at least you have this, you, the knowledge, you know, that you can pull that data through and automate those calculations and those adjustments uh, within the system should you, should you need to. So that's just a bit of an example of how, you know, data can flow between the different processes um, and really, you know, cut out the kind of duplication and the risks around, you know, manually reusing data again and again in lots of different kind of Excel, Excel files. And where we're pushing to or where we're moving to with our products coming on the cloud more and more is building out a lot more of these connectivities. So one of the examples in things that we're now working on is, OK, can we get the journals out of the, the year end visit, uh, the year end um, pr process? Can we take those journals and then, you know, combine them with a TV from your ERP system within you know, within the one source platform and then use that for the next statutory reporting process. So helping to complete that kind of full kind of circular process that you, you kind of you view that, that you view direct access uh, when you're working in in house. So a lot we can do here in terms of, you know, connecting up the one source products. This is very much one part of it. But another aspect is, you know, this platform it's designed to sit within your own kind of wider ecosystem so we can connect it up to your erp systems for example whether that's for data coming in or data going back out into those we can also then fit that into uh connect it up to other applications of you know of your choice so your company might have a a preference or ready license say power bi for for example from an analytical and a dashboarding dashboarding point of view it makes sense therefore that rather than kind of hold hostage all your tax data, which you, you've got in the platform, a lot of valuable, rich data there, it makes sense that we open that up for you and enable you to you know, connect that up into these other applications so you can leverage it in different ways, uh, in, in different ways. So yes, very much about building a tax kind of platform for you to work from, but really open that up so it can fit in with your wider financial, uh, at your, your wider finance and company kind of agendas on when it comes to things like managing your IT uh, and so forth. Okay, so that's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a, 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 an intro into kind of what OneSource is doing in terms of moving across into, you know, moving across into the cloud. What we propose to do now, I'm just checking time, uh, is actually do a quick kind of a demonstration of, of the platform itself. So um, bear with me, I need to log in. <laughs> so, the platform itself it is a web-based platform so again this helps make it very it light um you know we haven't got to install things on on your desktop and so forth that also means we can roll out new content very easily for you should you know legislate legislation and regulations change change as well now a lot about getting prepared for the year end you know i often think 
you know, you're managing templates, Excel templates, you've got to roll those forward. You might have to update the tax rates and things individually within them. Your organization might have made an acquisition. You've got to build out more templates and things for them. Well, the platform enables us to actually centralize a lot of the admin that can come around kind of managing these processes. So even though we have kind of this breadth, uh, this wide breadth of solutions uh, across the across your tax processes, we can actually, you know, centralize kind of the admin around that. So simple things from, you know, having one simple, well, one user profile, which you can tailor to that individual's kind of role within the organization in terms of, you know, what solutions they can see, uh, what entities that they are responsible for, the level of read and write access. But rather than have lots of different logins, we can give you kind of what, what one login and manage that from a central from a central place. We're also introducing the entity manager, which again will help drive further efficiencies. So rather than having to set up your entities within directly within every single solution, you can actually manage those and onboard those at a platform uh, a platform level and then roll those out uh, across the relevant uh, across the relevant solutions. So for example, if I pick on a UK. We can see we've got a number of UK entities we've set up on the platform. Here we can contain a lot of our permanent information around those. And that information, the idea is that's then going to drive various sort of bits of functionality within the individual solutions. So it just makes that kind of management of your group, uh, the management of your entities, uh, and the, you know, giving you a central kind of place to manage that kind of permanent data around those. Um, for example, I've got a heading up here. I can't see my screen. There we go. Um, so, for example, you know, our tax calendar, mod calendar module is going to, you know, feed up off that kind of master data around those entities to, you know, uh, create and identify your, your filing requirements, your payment uh, deadlines, whether that's for corporate tax purposes, you know, your statutory reporting or, or, or VAT and so forth. Okay. Um, so that's just one example of, you know, how, you know, centralizing things, uh, much of your data within a platform can, you know, drive efficiencies, drive synergies across, uh, across the one source suite. Okay, so let's actually now take a quick look at the provision solution that you've had a sort of bit of an intro to, to the platform overall uh, and open up the tax provision. There we go. Here we go. A second <laughs> ah, there we go and annoyingly in a demo situation it has remembered where i was last at but typically the landing page which you come into when you let uh, when you open up the provision solution is what you see in front of you and i think it's important to realize that the tax provision module has been designed to be you know very intuitive and easy to use uh, i mentioned earlier about empowering you as a tax team to evolve your setup uh, as you know, as your organization changes. And that's very much, you know, a theme across the, the solutions itself. So on screen, for example, we have currently what we call data sets. And these essentially are kind of the different periods, the time periods that you're doing your reporting for. And in front of you, you can see I've got 2018, 2019 provision, 2020 provision, and so on. Now that's quite an annual li linear kind of approach, but you know, this can be year to date purposes. So you can do this for monthly, quarterly purposes. You can also start using it for things like scenario planning and forecasting and, you know, interim reporting. So what a lot of people typically when they look at the provision solution, yes, they're initially thinking about that kind of year end and driving kind of value through that year end process. But once you start using it because of the ease of use and the flexibility, what a lot of people will then start doing is actually using this for scenario planning, you know, uh, take a copy of their existing data, chuck in some, you know, some adjustments and some numbers and see how that impacts their results. And you can then feed that information kind of kind of up and help it to use it to help influence uh, business decisions. So we'll talk about data sets a little bit more, but I'll just invite you to observe the headings across the top here because there's really three areas to the provision solution. So it's very, quite very simple in that respect. Data sets is about the time period, bringing in your data. You then have a dedicated area from which you can carry out your reviews. And this really gives you a quick snapshot of your key metrics uh, being generated from the provision calculations, which you know will automatically apply as you import your data. And then you have a dedicated reporting area as well. From here, 
your all your data, whether it's at a, a local entity basis, whether it's in a, a subgroup or whether it's for the for the entire consolidated group, you know, this will all roll up instantly for you. So if you think about your those working group tax, you're probably getting lots of Excel packs at the moment, trying to align all that together to get to your group position. We actually do away with that completely here. The data will all, because, because the data is all going into one location, whether it's at, at that local entity level, that will all automatically consolidate up for you. And you can then, you know, see your results reflected, reflected within that and break out your reports in sort of numerous different ways. So for example, if I just run the provision report quickly, we'll be able to see, you know, the consolidated group, but we can also split that out by the various uh, entities that we, we, we have within here. So those are the three main areas within the provision solution. So data sets, manage your time periods, multiple user cases in which you can use the provision solution for, a review and edit area that gives you a snapshot of the key metrics and then enables you to drill down into the, the detail behind that, and then the, the reporting area, which will chuck out your disclosures. I think when it comes to kind of the reports, Obviously, we look. We will work to work, or BDO in particular can work with you to, you know, identify how you need your reports to look, what kind of disclosures you need to, uh, you you are needing to provide. We can, but they can also act as a good as a as a good indicator for, you know, for helping you on your tax planning uh, situation. So there's a detailed ETR report, for example, which will, you know, break out every single one of your adjustments and show you how that's impacting your ETR, whether you're, you know, viewing that for the consolidated group or for on a particular entity. So the reports themselves, yes, ultimately you're looking to get those kind of disclosures for the, for the year end, but also can actually help with, with that review and that analysis. What the provision solution does, um, typically it's, you know, you bring in trial balance data, it's going to automate the kind of calculations, you know, based on rules that you can configure and evolve over time as, as, as required. The idea of that, that, those kind of calculations, and I think it's probably fair to say for, for the majority of our users, probably aims you to get, say, you know, 80, 90 percent of, you know, of your calculations, you know, of, of your calculations done. So, um, if you think about your non-material entities, you can typically typically import the data, the automation applies, and then, you know, the local users can come in, just reconcile, well, sign that off, uh, you know, reconcile that, you see that at the group tax level, sign that off, makes you happy, and then produce your disclosures. For that extra 20%, uh, perhaps your more material entities, you know, it gives you a good grounding, a good basis from which to, you know, to base your, your detail calculations. So, the idea of the automization, it, it really takes your users, whether those are, you know, local financial controllers who might not be so tax savvy, or whether you're in group tax, it really, you know, helps to minimize the amount of time that you are, you know, doing just data collection and data entry kind of work by automating data collection, automating the calculations, so you can come in and spend more time doing the actual kind of review and analysis and, uh, and do the value add act. Uh, activity um how am i doing for time ian because I, I i think we've got about five minutes i know you want q a uh, as well there isn't much uh, coming in in terms of the q a uh, josh so if you've got you know wrap it up in a minute or so and then we'll uh, we'll close for today sure okay let's um let's let's probably wrap it up there there's a lot more obviously that i can go into and i've just slightly run out of uh Looks like I've just slightly run out of time, which is uh, very common with me for those who have sort of seen me present and uh, uh, and, and speak speak before. So, what I'll try and do very quickly then is just kind of kind of, kind of summarise really what the, the the platform is bringing and you know within the core solutions as well. So, we're centralising your data within one platform to drive efficiencies across the processes, so you can leverage you know your financial data that's coming in, your tax adjusted data. From one solution to, to another to drive consistency and reduce the risk around those. Um, we can also, you know, do a lot around the data management, getting that data ready, uh, get capturing, you, because we're using technology, you can actually capture data at a more granular level. So you might want to go down to a transactional level rather than just a TB. And we can use technology, uh, things like Alteryx I saw in one of the, the BDO slides, for example, we can actually use those kind of, kind of other solutions, these data wrangling solutions to help 
you know, get your data in good shape and in, in good shape so that when it comes into the one source solution and the optimization is applying, you know, you can really drive that accuracy by having more granular, more granular data. Um, so, yes, driving efficiency across all the processes, giving you a digitally kind of connected, uh, connected audit trail, which you can click back through across those as well, obviously helps to drive uh, minimize risk. But doing that with you know, modern technology enabling you to take advantage of APIs so you can do it in a way that is agile and you can evolve you know, the setup as your organization grows, as tax legislation, you know, regulations continue, uh, continue to change. Um, obviously, I can go into a huge amount more detail on all of this and I'll be very happy to uh, uh, another time, of course. Um, but given the time, I think we'll just move on to the Q&A because we've got a few minutes left. Yeah, thanks, uh, Josh. Really appreciate it. And, and, and thanks to all our speakers today. Ho thank you for joining. Hope you found that useful. Um, I think for me, it's always interesting to hear different perspectives uh, and where some of the IT vendors are going and some of our insights as well in terms of what we're seeing in the market. So um, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of questions coming through. If anybody um, does have anything or does want to follow up on any of these points, please do get in touch with your usual BD video contacts we'll be more than happy to field those calls and can offer you some insights the video i think our vision and our view of this is that we are one of the leading implementers of all of the tax technology software that's out there and it's great that thompson white is one of our um, strategic partners in terms of being able to implement their software so we can give you a different perspective as these things are going through so hugely appreciate josh's time today but uh, thank you all for joining and look out for further sessions on similar topics that will be coming up across the year so uh, if you're not following me on linkedin please do so and uh, i'll be sure to keep posting on there with uh, future events that are coming up so thank you all very much for today and uh, hopefully speak to you soon thank you all